Samuel Ramey singing from Act Four of Verdi's Don Carlo. He's with the Munich Radio Orchestra. I'm Caitlin Matson levy and this is The Green Room. Oh my goodness, I just so happen to have the great American bass, Samuel Ramey, here with me. Hello, Sam. Hi, how are you today? <laughs> well, I'm just beside myself to have an opportunity to, to talk with you. You are a legend, as, as you know. You know, I don't think we need to be humble here. You're a legend, especially in Kansas. In Kansas. Um, <laughs> yes, and beyond. Um, so Sam Ramey, world-renowned. You've had just an incredible career that spanned decades. You've sung in every major opera house around the world. You've been at Carnegie Hall, sold out several times, European tours, all of it. And here you are. You have found yourself back in Kansas, where you came from. Uh, tell us a bit about um, where you grew up and about your education at Wichita State and K-State. Okay. Yes, I, um, well, I was born and raised in a small town out in Northwest Kansas, Colby. And um, uh, so I never, I, I was always in, inclined, I've, I've sung from as long as I can remember, um, but I never, never had much exposure to classical music, especially opera, um, except every once in a while, you know, a singer would appear on the Ed Sullivan show <laughs> back in the day, if you know what the Ed Sullivan show was. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, and uh, then I, I, I went, um, I went, I started my college education at Kansas State um, because they offered me a scholarship and we were very poor. So any, any little amount of help was <laughs> was a bonus, so I went. I went there for um, uh, for a year and a half, and um, <clears throat> my teacher there, a man named uh, William Fisher, um, had me. He started me working on an aria from the Marriage of Figaro, Non più andrai, and uh, he suggested that I maybe go to the library or find somehow find find a recording, you know, of some singer singing it. So. Uh, I went down to a local record store and found a, an, an old album of some guy named Ezio Pinza. <laughs> and, uh, and there was Non Pio and Dry on there. So I, I bought that and started. And I think it was, it was his voice, I don't know, that really drew me to, to opera. I didn't know if I could ever sound anything like that, but... <laughs> I started going to the library and listening to complete operas. And then I heard about um, the Central City Opera out in Colorado, that they hired young singers to sing in the chorus. And there was a, a small uh, sort of workshop, not, not really a young artist program yet, like it is now. But um, <clears throat> they, so I, anyway, I went out to my local radio station out in Colby, KXXX, and um, they let me use a room to make a tape. And I sent it off, and lo and behold, they, they hired me. So, they, I mean, they, they said they would take me. So I went out to Central City. This is the summer of 1963. And um, I had never seen an opera until I was actually on stage <laughs> in one. The two operas we did that summer were Don Giovanni and uh, Il Trovatore. And uh, there were some great singers there that summer, Norman Tragel, uh, the, um, uh, Spiro Malas, uh, Justino Diaz, lots of really good basses. You know? yeah. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so after that summer, I sort of, well, I, as, I, as we were rehearsing, you know, and I was watching all these singers rehearse, and I thought, gee, this is really interesting. I think, I think I'd... I'd like to to try to do this for a, you know as a as a as a career. Uh, you got, so you got um, by the bug, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it was you know if it was like it was going to be easy. Hey, I think I'll right. do this now. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, like you were going to go into sales. I yeah, exactly. Anybody <laughs> can do sales. Well, it, it is kind of got going into sales. You got to sell your voice. You know, <laughs> got to sell yourself. All right. And uh, there were a couple of, of uh, kids in the chorus in Central City that summer who were from Wichita State. And um, because K-State didn't have any any opera 
at that time, I don't know about now, but uh, they didn't at that time have any an opera department or anything. So, so um, these these kids from Wichita State sort of said, well, I'll come to Wichita State. You know, we have a really good opera, opera department there. And so I transferred to Wichita State and um, uh, started my started my studies there. Um, I think I remember my first role, my first opera role was um, Dr. Miracle in the Tales of Hoffman, which was the first opera, uh, the opera that they were doing in the fall of 1963. Mm. <laughs> so, um, and I, I studied with a, a man named Arthur Newman yes. here at Wichita State. Um, he was, he was uh, one of the charter, sort of so-called charter members of the old New York City Center Opera Company, but became New York City Opera when it first began in 1943. <clears throat> so he talked about New York City Opera all the time. And, and uh, but anyway, I got to, got to do a lot of uh, performing while I was here in Wichita and, uh, and sort of set me on the, on the, on the right track to, and I went from here to, I got a job, um, with a small opera company, a small touring opera company in North Carolina. Uh, it had been called the Grassroots Opera, mm -hmm. but then they had changed their name to the National Opera Company. So I sent them off the tape. a little and, bit more prestigious, a little bit yeah. more established. <laughs> yeah, than yeah grassroots. exactly. Right. Yeah. Well, I have a question. You mentioned City Opera. Was mm -hmm. it? I was reading your bio. Was City Opera, um, am I correct? That City Opera was one of your first breakthrough roles was with city opera in carmen yeah yeah um yeah i i sang I, I, when i first i went to new york uh, 19 in the summer of 1969 after i finished uh, here at wichita state and then did this little stint with the grassroots opera and um <clears throat> yeah eventually i um i sang around um, my voice i found a voice teacher in new york named uh, Armin Boyajin, and uh, he had a, a small opera, sort of workshop opera in Patterson, New Jersey. And they, so I did a number of operas with uh, his little company. Mm. And, um, and ev eventually I, I, we thought, you know, uh, we decided that I was ready to start doing some auditioning for managers and um, oh. opera companies, whatever. Yeah. So I um, <clears throat> I wrote the New York City Opera because back then uh, you could New York City Opera would audition anybody. All you had to do was write them a letter and ask to audition, and they would have you come and sing for them. So you did, and you sang, and so we'll I did that, talk, and I we'll we'll talk about um, the progression of your career. Um, but first, I wanted people to hear that story about you with the City Opera and singing. Yeah. Was it Zuninga with? Carmen. I did but, Zuniga. I made my debut at City Opera in 1973, singing the role of Zuniga in Carmen. But I, graduated, you have, you graduated I graduated here. a few years later to Escamillo. And that's what we're <laughs> going to hear right now. We have a okay, recording excellent. of your Escamillo. We're going to listen to it. This is you with the Bavarian State Orchestra and Chorus. We'll be right back with Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi singing yes. Escamillo from Carmen. <laughs> and I'm Caitlin Matson levy and this is The Green Room, and I'm joined by Sam Raimi himself. We got a lovely overview of your time at Wichita State and what kind of led you to decide to have a career in opera. Once you were off and running, though, um, you very quickly became the bass. You were the bass that people wanted to hear, they wanted to hire. Um, a pretty incredible career. And one of the things that you became very well known for were your three devils, Gunos Faust, Boito's Mephistopheles, and Berlioz's The Damnation of Faust. Mm -hmm. And I'm particularly curious about the Boito and the Robert Carson production. You had a production of Boito's Mephistopheles created just for you. That's right, yeah. Um, I had done many performances at the New York City Opera of, of they had a fantastic production there, um, which had been done for Norman Tregel. And uh, I, got, I got to do, uh, I did about probably 60 or 70 performances of that. So I had done Mephistopheles uh, quite a bit. And, and uh, I had a nice relationship with the opera 
in um, in Geneva, in Switzerland, and um, the man there um, uh, wanted me to come back, and he yeah, he just asked me what I would like to do, and and I said, well, I said I'd I'd like to uh, to do a a different production. I've done Mephistophele a lot. I'd like to do a new production of that. So he put it all together. We got Robert Carson. I remember meeting with Robert Carson in New York. Uh, we went to have coffee one night just to just to talk about his ideas for the production. And and um, um, so um, yeah, that it went to, it opened in Geneva and. Uh, it was done uh, sort of as a joint production with the San Francisco Opera. And so that so uh, it was done first in Geneva, but then uh, it came, I think, um, a year later in, in uh, San, at the San Francisco Opera. Well, then it, be, it became like sort of the talk of the town, the production. It was a fab, fab, fabulous production. I saw it and, in Chicago. That's oh, you saw it, it in Chicago? Yeah, I did it. 1998, I think it was, a Chicago Lyric production. I, oh, I got okay. to see you yeah. perform it, and I concur. And it was absolutely breathtaking. Is it the opening scene where it has floor-to-ceiling balconies and the chorus yeah. is out there, and it's just, you're just kind of like shot in the face with sound? Well, <laughs> yeah. another and another thing that I, I'm so curious about, you know, anybody that's followed your career, your work, anybody who might, you know, YouTube, Sam Raimi wants to listen or learn more about you. You know, we're all very aware of these costumes you have been put in when you are the devil. And it can range anything from a skin tight lycra potty suit to you're what? being half naked on the stage. I mean, you have to be, you're the devil, you know? <laughs> um, tell us a bit about the costumes. And these are costumes that have followed you around for decades. I mean, you were wearing them, what, in your 20s or? All the way up, you know, in well, your 50s, not quite. In your 60s, you know, <laughs> I was very quite curious. That <laughs> You're 30. But I, I did wear these costumes, wear those costumes for a long time. They were wonderful costumes, you know. He, he, Mephisto makes his entrance in the prologue uh, wearing a, a long red um, tails, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, no shirt underneath, you know, the tails and climbs out of the orchestra pit. So. Yes. <laughs> It's just Some, fantastical. I mean, and yeah. it's just a feast for all the senses. And I just, I was just imagining um, you preparing for a performance or maybe you have one coming up in eight months. You're like, well, I have to wear that, that skin tight bodysuit in eight months. <laughs> you know, like thinking ahead about what you have to be prepared for. Yeah, it's exactly right. <laughs> I had to watch my diet and all that. <laughs> <laughs> So now you are retired, but you still sing. You um, people reach out. I imagine they reach out all the time, wanting you to kind of you know guest artist here and there, certain things. But you're essentially retired, both from performing and from teaching at Wichita State University. When did you move back to Wichita? How long has it been? Well, I started coming to Wichita State <clears throat> after when my career started to, uh, my singing career started to slow down, you know, but I thought, well, I should look into, you know, something I'd like to do um, after I quit singing, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to need to work. <laughs> got a young son, you know, I've got <laughs> yeah. and um, so um, <clears throat> I, I contacted uh, Wichita State. And uh, asked them if there would be any possibility of my doing any uh, teaching at um, at the university, and uh, I heard back right away. Well, they started. <clears throat> we started. I can't remember the exact year I started coming. I think it was maybe 2011 or 2012. I started coming first. I would come for like two weeks two or three weeks um, I, and whenever I could schedule it, you know, when I was still sort of busy with the singing. <clears throat> and then um, then eventually I, I asked them, I said, well, you know, I'm really coming and you know, not singing so much and starting in whatever year it was, I can't remember. Um, I said, would you, would you want me to, to come here and, and be here full time at, at some point? So they, you know, we came to an agreement and I said, yes. And so we moved here. We moved here in the summer, the summer of 
2014. Mm. Yeah. And, and uh, your little Sam is not so little anymore. No, he's not. He's he just turned 19. So. Oh my. And <laughs> so you are uh, you're married. Your wife Lindsay, also a professor, also a beautiful singer, incredible yep. singer, soprano, um, teaching at Wichita State, or or has in the past as well. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Um, she did some teaching for a few, a few years, and uh, who knows? That might that might happen again. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Sam Raimi, it's fascinating to talk to you, and you're welcome back here anytime. In fact, we might reach out sooner rather than later because I feel like there's so much of your story that people would just be interested in hearing. Sure. Um, and it's fascinating. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me well, today. Thank you for having me. It's like I listen to I'm I'm listening to Radio Kansas all the time in my car whenever I'm in my car. <laughs> you know we love to hear that. We're flattered. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sam. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>